What's going on, everyone? So the Lakers have been atrocious shooting the basketball this year. You know, they were dead last. Uh, they also were the fewest, second fewest uh, in three-point attempts, so they weren't taking a ton of them. But still, they've been really bad shooting the basketball, and it just is strange in many ways, right? Because I didn't expect them to be an elite three-point shooting team, but they have enough quality three-point shooters and guys like Torrey and Prince, Austin Reeves, DeAndre Russell. Those are three guys that can give you 40-plus percent. Um, I thought the Lakers would at least be middle of the pack. And I mean, it's still early. They very well could. I figured the Lakers would be somewhere in like maybe the 15 to depending on how well LeBron shot the basketball, maybe like 12 to 10 range, right? Because my concern is LeBron, if he's just chucking up seven threes a game, um, if he's shooting 20%, <laughs> right? And he's as bad as he was last year, then that's just going to tank the Lakers three point percentage. But so far, LeBron has been good, not great, or I mean, for his standards, he's never going to be a great elite three-point shooter, um, but even last night, he was three of four from three, been about 31% uh, so far this season, obviously this game should bump it up a little bit, and I'm not expecting him to go three of four every single game of the season, but you know, if he could be consistent shooting the three ball, I, I believe Prince will get back in a rhythm. Austin Reeves uh, shot 50% last night. That's good. Uh, he's been shooting atrocious, 28% from three on the season. And then D'Angelo Russell was 0-3, which that doesn't help. Um, but he's shot in 32% from three. If I expect him to get back to around 40% as well. Um, but last night, we saw what the Lakers are capable of if they're hitting threes. I mean, a lot of it was sparked by uh, Cam Reddish, who was 5 of 8 from 3. But I've talked about it a lot, right? Like, three-point shooting, hustle, energy, rebounding. Like, a lot of things in sports, and especially basketball, is contagious. Right? You see a team just shooting the lights out from 3, and it's like, how is every guy just can't miss? And again, because it's contagious. And you saw that with the Lakers last night. Saw Cam Reddish get going. Boom, he hit like, what, two or three threes in a row? And then you had Christian Wood. He goes and he comes in and he knocks down a three. Uh, Rui Hachimura, he comes down and he knocks down a three. And you just saw this team just start rattling off threes. Austin Reeves hitting a bunch of threes. And, again, it's because it can be contagious. Sometimes you just need to see the basketball go in the hoop. Once you see the basketball go in the hoop, Everything kind of changes, and then that that hoop goes from you know being the size of a, of a cup to the size of a, a, an ocean, right? And you just see guys just start knocking them in. Now, I I'm not saying that this is necessarily the point that the Lakers are now the best three point shooting team in the league. They shot 44 percent from three uh, last night. They were 12 of 27. I'm not expecting them to shoot 44 percent game in and game out, but can they be Somewhere in that like 36 to 37 percent, which would be great. And I don't think that that's that unreasonable. Rui's been pretty solid shooting the three ball. Uh, Gabe Vincent, when he comes back, we're going to need him to start knocking down threes. If he continues to struggle, uh, he's like, what, one of 15 or something like that from three right now? Um, but if he can kind of get back into the flow, there's another 38 to 40 percent three point shooter or a guy that's capable of that. And you start looking at this roster and you go, man, like, wait a minute, we may have some real opportunity to be a good three point shooting team, at least respectable, right? Because right now, the Lakers' offense has struggled. But a lot of the offensive struggles are because guys aren't hitting shots. I've seen so many people talk about, like, oh, you know, the Lakers are running this five out offense and you know, and they should go back to the, the one in, four out offense and they should, like, you can run whatever offense you want. If guys aren't hitting shots, it's irrelevant. You can run the best offense ever invented. It doesn't matter if guys don't hit shots. But when guys are hitting shots, all of a sudden, it makes the offense, whatever offense you're running, great. Right? Like, the whole point is to spread the floor so like guys like LeBron can just get to the rim at will and not have to fight over five guys or the defenses collapse and then he can kind of kick out. You got all the shooters and all that stuff, right? And, and I don't mind them running 
you know, four wide with Anthony Davis in the middle or, you know, a Jackson Hayes in the middle or whomever. Like, that's fine. But at the end of the day, guys still have to hit shots, right? Like, the the whole point of the offense that we're running is for there to be all these different actions and, you know, kind of a more free-flowing offense. But guys, one, other than last night, you saw them do a better job in the fourth quarter of sharing the basketball, which is something I have talked about heavily the ball's sticking too much. You saw in preseason, and I know it's preseason, but they were things that should translate into the regular season. You saw games in the preseason where they were getting like 30 assists, and the ball was moving and flowing, and you know you had all these back... To- like, the Lakers were doing that in the Suns game, and it was leading to success. Every time the Lakers run a set, and I know... A lot of people are like, Darvin Ham doesn't run any plays. He doesn't run any... They absolutely run plays and sets. I mean, you see LeBron in the games calling out sets or or making hand gestures or, you know, D'Lo or Darvin Ham on the sideline making hand gestures or screaming something out. They're, they're running sets. If you watch the game, you can see them run sets, run plays. More times than not, it leads to something good, right? Obviously, there's the, the standard stuff, your bread and butter, like, you know, the pick and rolls. And, and that's been absolute just just butter for the Lakers. But they've ran other sets. And usually when there's movement and there's constant action going on, the Lakers end up putting the ball in the hoop, right? But it still needs guys to hit shots, right? When you're not hitting shots, you're bailing out the defense. The whole point is to, to have constant movement, Having guys on the court that can knock down shots, allow LeBron to be LeBron and get to the basket and do whatever and then react to the defense. And at some point, there's going to be a breakdown on the defensive side in which you now can expose and capitalize and boom, that's going to lead to easy buckets that should help you score the basketball. But again, you don't get a lot of that stuff if guys aren't hitting shots, right? Like if... The Lakers, as we saw last night, start hitting shots. It changes everything. Now, all of a sudden, you see the Phoenix Suns are, in many ways, in scramble mode. Because it's like, okay, well, we have to worry about LeBron. We have to worry about AD down low, right? Like, okay, so we got to collapse. We got to just hope that these guys start missing. And then Cam Reddish is knocking down shots. Wood's knocking down shots. Reeves is knocking down shots. Rui's knocking down shots. Now, it forces the defense to panic because now they got to go out and run out to to Cam Reddish. And then you saw the Lakers get offensive rebounds. Why? Because they don't, it's not one against five. Now it's a more favorable matchup. And if guys, and if everyone else is crashing the board, now all of a sudden you're you're in at an advantage point to where you can start making teams pay. And that all stems from knocking down and hitting open shots. The Lakers, it's not like the Lakers are missing like super heavily contested shots. The Lakers are missing a lot of wide open shots. And from our better shooters, right? I mean, even, even Torian Prince, he struggled shooting the ball. He was 0 of 4 from 3, and he had several just wide open quality looks. Now, in his defense, he might have had the play of the game <laughs> towards the end where he could have taken that three, but to have the awareness of, like, we don't need that right now, let me let me hold on to the back. Oh, the defense just collapsed, and just now they just left me an opening and let me drive to the hoop. That was a mistake, right? Again, those mistakes become so much bigger when guys, and there's the fear and the threat of missing shots, right? Torrey and Prince has the basketball. They think he's going to pass it up. Because these guys over here are hitting shots, so the defense starts running over there, and they just left Tory and Prince open, and he still had the mind of like, hey, let me don't let me just chuck up a three, and if I miss, because I'm 0 of 4, right? What it did is it allowed him to get to the basket, and it gave him a free driving lane. And you get more of those when guys start hitting shots. The Lakers... Again, I'm not expecting them to be Golden State standard three-point shooting. But if they're at least middle of the pack from three, the Lakers are going to be a top seven to five offense. They are. They're going to be a very good offense. Because there's just too many 
constant threats out there. If Reeves and D'Lo and Prince and Vincent and Reddish and even Vando, if he can start, if he can knock down some threes, we only have a one preseason game sample size in which he was two or three, which is good. But if Rui and Wood and all of these guys, if they can all hit the three ball with some consistency, the Lakers, there's too many. How do you defend them? Because now you can't double Anthony Davis. Now you can't pack the paint. Now you can't double LeBron James because if you double LeBron James, he's going to kick it out to 40% Reeves or 40% D'Lo or 40% Prince or 38% uh, you know, uh, uh, Wood or Rui or Vincent or whomever's on the court. That was the whole point. It's like, oh, we got all these guys that can knock down shots. And you saw yesterday... Lakers shooting the basketball poorly again, looking terrible, shooting the three ball, and then the floodgates just opened. And, I mean, Cam Reddish deserves a world of credit for that because he's the one that opened those floodgates. But, you know, you saw how the three-point shot can be contagious, right? And just shooting, period. I mean, dude, we can't even shoot, make free throws. It drives me crazy. We missed eight free throws yesterday. We were 26 of 34. We blow out Phoenix if we hit our free throws. And a lot of those were early on. We probably don't have to play catch up if we hit those free throws. Right? But you saw what hitting hitting the shot creates. It allowed us to flip the tables. And all of a sudden, we are getting the offensive rebound. All of a sudden, we are getting second chance points. All of a sudden, you know, get back. Oh, another thing. Oh, he missed. Okay, another offensive rate. Oh, kick out. Boom. There's the there's the the punishment. Right? There's the punishment shot. There's the dagger. And those happen. It's happened to us <laughs> all season, right? But we can become that team simply by just hitting shots. And I'm hoping that this is the game that we can point to, that Suns game, where we can point to and go. That was, the, that was the table turner, right? That was the tide turner. That was the moment in which guys started to come around. You know, again, we're, we're going to have, every team has bad shooting nights, right? You're going to have a bad shooting night, but it's just the Lakers have a bad shooting night every single night, <laughs> right? It's like, okay, like, uh, come on, can we, can we get string a couple good quality shooting nights together? That would be great, right? And luckily, now we're going, we're facing a stretch in which we may really be able to get into the flow offensively. So we got a three game homestand. Our next two games are against the Blazers and the Grizzlies. Both teams have been awful, can't defend. Lakers are going to get a lot of, a lot of wide open shots. Got to knock them down. You win those two games, all of a sudden you're over 500. And then you take on the Sacramento Kings, which they're not very good defensively either. And again, after that, you got the Blazers, the Rockets, the Jazz. I mean, the Lakers could easily here go on, you know, a six-game winning streak. I know Rockets are cruising right now, and they're, they've are they been playing good basketball. But the Lakers should beat the Rockets at home, right? So now you got six out of your next seven games at home. Got to win all of those games, at least the home games, right? I mean, the the road game is against the Blazers, so you should beat them, but you're playing the Blazers twice in a four-game span. So, I mean, any team in the league, it's hard to do that from, but I'd like to see that. We have a real moment to kind of pull away and, and create some separation and get over 500, right? We win, we win our next seven games all of a sudden, or even six out of our next seven all of a sudden, we're five, six games over 500. And now we are one of the top in the standings. And then at that point, it's just weathering the storm from there, right? And that's what the Lakers need to do. So I'm hoping that that's the case. Right now, the Lakers are sitting at the eighth seed, um, right ahead of Phoenix, because we have the tiebreakers, which is why these these games 2-0 and against Phoenix is important um, if it comes to those tiebreakers. But, you know, if we win our next handful of games all of a sudden we're going to really jump up but anyway as always this is a discussion so i pass a question on you let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below what do you think do you think that this could be a real turning point 
for the Lakers and uh, an opportunity for them to uh, kind of right the ship shooting the basketball? Do you think, um, you know, that no, that was kind of an anomaly? Again, however you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. It helps me out a lot. Let's me enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. I appreciate you all. See you in the next one. Thank you.